Video number 21 plus, The Albers Paradox. Hello everyone, today's video is devoted to a simple looking question. Why is the sky black at night? Heinrich Wilhelm Matthias Albers, 1758-1840, was a German astronomer, physician and physicist. This question is attributed to him in the form of a paradox which had already been stated by Thomas Dix in 1596, by Johannes Kepler in 1610, and by Edmund Halley and Lois de Chazot in the 18th century. You can find on the web many analyses of this paradox, but most of which end by saying that only general relativity and the Big Bang theory can provide a solution. It will therefore be an excellent example of biased or abusive conclusions if it turns out that another explanation is possible. Why then does the darkness of night raise question? Simply because if stars were evenly distributed in an infinite space around us, as traditionally assumed in the past, their overall luminosity should be infinite. To understand this, let's cut the three-dimensional space into an infinity of spherical bubbles of equal thickness, for example, one light year, centered on the Earth. The number of stars in each bubble is statistically proportional to the volume, hence to the square of the radius since the thickness is constant. Seen from the Earth, the luminosity of these stars, assumed to be all similar on average, and therefore the same average absolute luminosity, is inversely proportional to the square of the radius. So, the overall luminosity of each bubble, close and small, or large and far away, is the same. When we add all these luminosities, the result is infinite. Not only should we be dazzled, but each bubble producing the same amount of heat, the resulting temperature would be infinite. Everything would be vaporized at once. Note that the fundamental assumption was the uniform distribution of stars in an infinite space. Assuming the argument to be correct, there are therefore at least two ways to resolve the paradox. Either the universe has a finite spatial extension, or the distribution is not uniform. Proponents of general relativity and the Big Bang have opted for a finitely extended universe at each time. This removes the paradox, at least qualitatively. But actually, we now know that the distribution of luminous matter is absolutely not uniform. Whichever spatial scale is considered. The galaxies are flat, and on a very large scale, the matter is gathered in structures with two or even one dimension, bubbles and filaments whose appearance at the scale of the so-called observable universe is rather fractal. This is called the cosmic tapestry. Can this provide an alternative explanation? Let's be honest. Even if all the elements of the tapestry were thread-like, that would not solve the paradox. As long as the distribution of threads is homogeneous, which is reasonable in the case of an infinite and stationary universe. Indeed, choosing the simplest case of parallel thread-like structures and replacing the spheres by parallel cylinders at each distance d, we would find, after some calculations, that the covered surface is proportional to d at least, instead of d square, ending up for the total luminosity with the sum of a harmonic series, still infinite. Must we therefore admit that the universe is finite? Not necessarily, because there is another phenomenon, the spectral redshift, generally interpreted as reflecting cosmic expansion, 
causes radiations from very distant stars to reach us in the infrared or microwave wavelengths instead of visible light. Moreover, we are now beginning to think that the light of very distant stars could be occulted by nearby stars which form a shield, and that more distant stars are more likely to be occulted. The spectral shift argument is not convincing in itself because if the transmitted power is not changed, microwaves can vaporize us just as well as visible light. And weakening of the transmitted power seems to require cosmic expansion. If we want to free ourselves from that hypothesis, perhaps the phenomenon of occultation is enough on its own to remove the paradox. But it is more likely that we should combine it with the idea of the cosmic tapestry to have finite luminosity. Simple ideas in astronomy often need to be tempered with deeper thought. And as you can see, this may take quite a while.